Welcome to our final presentation covering employees' privacy and the management of personal information. Let me advance to our final section so we can get into the substance of the chapter. Here we go. In our first lecture, we covered the first two topics, kind of an overview of privacy and the concept of reasonable expectation of privacy, which as you've seen, is relevant to really every square inch of this topic. In our second lecture, we talked about constitutional issues, which are almost exclusively, except I would say exclusively in the governmental employee scenario. And then we talked about statutory issues, which um, are a combination. Sometimes they are exclusively governmental employee issues. Sometimes they also relate to the private sector. And in our third lecture, we cover the topic of common law issues. This is where most of the energy, most of the um, issues are in this area. And common law issues are usually focused on private sector concerns. In our um, fourth lecture, we talked about uh, special issues such as off-duty activities, employees' personal property, a little bit about drug testing, and then we're going to cover the topic of employee monitoring in this, our final section session on this particular chapter. And you can see our topics are going to be telephone, email, and computers, medical records, investigations, and polygraph tests. So let's get started. Um, employee monitoring has been around since the beginning of time. I mean, it's one of the main functions that we have for supervisors. They're supposed to be watching employees, making sure everyone's doing what they're supposed to be doing, providing assistance when it's necessary, providing correction when that's necessary. Um, it's just a nature of the work environment. How that monitoring has happened has evolved when the tools available have evolved. And certainly with the um, use of, or the availability of various technologies, monitoring is a, a different animal, a different creature than it once was. And so some of these tools involve legal concerns, ethical concerns, company culture concerns. Um, and they cut both ways. In some respects, uh, monitoring can be a very good and ethical choice. Um, and sometimes perhaps people would say that it is not a good or ethical choice. And so uh, you have to uh, kind of walk through those issues, both from a legal standpoint, as well as a corporate culture standpoint. When you use the various technologies that are available, one thing that you'll see is that there's a lot of data that they can generate. And so there's an issue about how do you analyze it? Do you analyze it? How do you store it? How long do you store it? Who has access to the data? So there's lots of issues along those lines. So even once you've decided to collect the data, if that's what you decide, you still have lots of other issues to decide. Another issue that becomes relevant that also has to do with our technological world is that sometimes, especially with um, exempt or salaried individuals, there's less of a clear demarcation between when a person is doing work and when a person is not doing work. For example, most people um, check their emails pretty regularly, um, even when they're away from the office. And so they may be checking that information on their personal uh, tools, such as their phones or their uh, computers or laptops or their tablets and um, they may be doing that when they are at home in transit on business trips lots of different techniques we might say this is the always on office and so are uh, should there be differing approaches to the level of surveillance when a person isn't at work um, there can be additional issues about about this topic generally when we're talking about hourly employees let's say that I am employed on an hourly basis. Well, let's say I'm a paralegal and this particular employer chooses to compensate its paralegals on an hourly basis. And um, I check my emails once I get home, maybe right when I get home, maybe right before I go to bed. I check it a couple times over the weekend. And when I see that I have emails, I respond to a few. Maybe I end up spending an hour or two a week when I'm away from work responding to these matters. Well, um, I should be compensated for that time. And so that raises another issue uh, a Fair Labor Standards Act issue about that, uh, the issue of compensation under those circumstances. We aren't going to spend a lot of time on the uh, City of Toronto, uh, Ontario versus Quan case. We have that coming up in a couple of slides. The big takeaway, though, from Quan and from many of these other cases is that courts are okay with monitoring as a general concept as long as the employee knows that the monitoring is happening 
or the employee has reason to think that, that that's a reasonable thing for the employer to be doing. So we're going back to that reasonable expectation of privacy idea that we've seen throughout this material. When the employee knows or suspects or has been told that the monitoring is going to happen, the employer can pretty much do what it wants under those circumstances because the employee uh, should have known, should have realized that whatever he was doing could be the subject of monitoring. So as a result, if you're the employer, if you're representing the employer or you are the HR professional for that employer, you'll want to make it clear to employees when monitoring may be happening. And you probably want to overstate it because sometimes a culture's change until you might move to more monitoring rather than less monitoring. And so if there's any changes that are being made, you'll need to make an additional communication. Sometimes it's easier just to have a broader communication that kind of keeps the options of the employer open in this area. Okay, so I'm not going to focus too much on this case because, again, it has to do with a governmental employee. Mr. Kwan worked on a SWAT team. He was a, a police officer. And... Um, this is in the world, kind of an ancient history, this was a world with pagers, and the pagers that SWAT members had had the ability to take text messages. And uh, the SWAT team members were informed um, by, a sub with a, by a supervisor that, you know what, you could use your personal pagers for various and sundry things. I mean, they aren't your personal pages that were issued by the police, but, but you could use those pages uh, for personal messages. That was the idea behind it. Um, but it ended up that, in fact, no, that's not what the process was going to be. And so um, the city of Ontario searched through Kwan's text messages, and um, it found that um, there was some explicit sexual content in these communications. And so... Um, Officer Kwan and some others were subject to discipline. Well, Kwan said, wait a second, this was an unreasonable search and seizure. There was no warrant. You shouldn't have checked. The police department, of course, said, wait a second, this was our device. Um, we can check it whenever we want to. And the court came down largely on the side of the police force. The court held that the search of Kwan's text measure messages was reasonable, and all searches must be subject to the reasonableness within the circumstances. The fact that it was a, um, a, a device owned by the uh, police department was an important factor in that analysis. So again, the, the takeaway is make sure that uh, your employees are aware that searches will happen and um, probably even do searches from time to time and let the, the employees know that not only did you say it was going to happen, but you really meant it was going to happen. And therefore, uh, under that kind of uh, regime, the, the, the employee definitely has an understanding that, yes, I have no reasonable expectation of privacy in this context. Very common to have some kind of productivity monitoring in the workplace. There's lots of different tools for this. Again, the technology allows it. If you're a typist, uh, the computer can capture how many times the uh, you hit a key on the keypad. Um, it can measure what keypad key key hit key strikes that you're actually hitting. 